I don't think there's a tiki bar that has better glassware than Trader Vic's. Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I am glad to have you back here again for another drink. I hope you enjoyed last week with our friend Brianna. She told me that she would love to come back and do another cocktail, so hopefully we'll see Brianna again. If you look closely, I don't have my cutting board. There's no fruit. What the hell's going on here? I wanted to make a cocktail specifically for the glassware that it comes in. I acquired one of the most beautiful glasses that Trader Vic's used during their heyday of existence. And here she is. Ladies and gentlemen, the lady cocktail glass. And I stand by what I say about Trader Vic's having the best glassware. The Mike has all kinds of great glassware too. And the Kahiki had a lot of great glassware, but nobody beat Victor Bergeron when it came to specific glassware for specific drinks. For example, in his Bartender's Guide 1947 and 1972, he outlines all of the specific glassware that he used in his bar. Isn't that incredible? And that's just the glassware. There were tiki mugs, there were coconut mugs, there were barrels, all kinds of stuff. He even had like a Nautilus shell. Did he? Yeah, of course he did. And actually that stuff pops up later in the book. Marine tumblers, big shot glasses, the voodoo tumbler that's like one of the most rare glasses from Trader Vic's. There's your ceramic coconut cup. Pineapple, Headhunter cup, Skull mug, all kinds of stuff. So I stand by my comment saying that I think that Trader Vic had the most incredible assortment of cocktail specific glassware. I mean, it must have looked like a mess like in the kitchen, right? Or he was super organized. I don't know, I've never worked in a kitchen before. You know, I thought this was gonna be a quick video because this is a three ingredient cocktail. It's, it's, there's really nothing to it. There's no cutting oranges or limes or lemons or anything like that. Once I get going, I realize that I have a story to tell. And let me show you some of my Trader Vic's glassware collection. Like the Tahitian mug that was used to serve the Pinky Poo and the Honey Honey. The ceramic coconut cup that was used to serve the Mahini and the Kamaina. The fog cutter mug that was used to serve the Samoan fog cutter. And it's really cool because these are dated on the bottom, 1963. This always seemed a little bit more 70s or 80s to me, but this is the hot buttered rum cup for a delicious hot cocktail. The headhunter cup was used to serve the Cafe Diablo and the coffee grog. The skull mug was used to serve the hot buttered rum, Northwest Passage, Skull and Bones, and all the other hot drinks. And on the bottom it says made for Trader Vic's. It's kind of got spider webs on it because it lives out here in the breezeway, but Kind of appropriate right this is one that i incidentally found in the break room at volcom when i was working there the surf company <laughs> i opened up the cabinets and i saw this thing sitting up there and i was like that looks really looks old so i pulled it down and on the side i saw trader vicks fine old rum couldn't believe it so i took it to my art director and i was like uh and he's like yeah go ahead have it i don't think anybody wants that the rum keg was used to serve the rum keg and communal drinks. It's big. And then recently I started getting into collecting glassware that is not necessarily tiki, but Trader Vic's used in their restaurants. So this is from a company, I don't think I'm gonna tell you the name of the company because I don't need everybody going on to uh, eBay, snaking all the ones that I'm looking at. Something like this would have been used for a rum Cosmo, a pogo stick, Maui Fizz. And of course, Trader Vic's had their own uh, double bucket Mai Tai glasses. I don't seem to have any around right now. I know I have one somewhere. But the crown jewel of my Trader Vic's collection, and I paid for this one. I'm, I'm always like even scared moving it around. Is this glass that they call the Tiki Stem Champagne. I'm gonna have to read this one because there's so many cocktails that were served in this glass. So there was a four and a half ounce version and an eight ounce version. The four and a half ounce version, you would get a gimlet in it, banana daiquiri, Waikiki, Chinese itch, Eisenhower, King George V, Havana gold, La Florida daiquiri, pink lady, and the Tahitian gold. So one of those cocktails we'll end up making just so we can use that glass. But that's not why we're here. We're here for the lady glass. I gotta put this away. And the lady glass is this maiden holding up this bowl 
And in that bowl at Trader Vic's, you could get the pink cloud, the white cloud, the cucumber, the grasshopper, the harbor light, and the white coral, and any other after dinner drinks. Tonight, we're gonna make the pink cloud. Now the pink cloud lives on the back page of the menu as we go past the rum keg, Samoan and fog cutter, all these incredible glasses that they use to serve stuff in, the coffee grog, and the pink cloud is in the after dinner drinks, those special concoctions which complete a dinner. We offer a fine selection of cognacs and cordial. The pink cloud, creme de noyau, and white creme de cacao will assist you to the clouds of heaven. Victor Bergeron, just a delight with his words. So for this cocktail, we will be using evaporated milk, creme de cacao, and creme de noyau. And that's it. So uh, let's get to mixing. So in the 1947 to 1972 Dredervik's Bartending Guide, Victor Bergeron tells us that he would like us to use evaporated milk. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that smells like. Some kind of cream, really. Okay, well the lid's down in it now. Uh, don't know what to do about that, but I do know we need three quarters of an ounce of it, so... There's three quarters of an ounce, and we will pour this into this glass. One ounce of creme de cacao. Ooh! One ounce of that. And then two ounces of creme de no noyau. Noy, noyau, noyau. I had to look it up. I had to do the pronunciation thing on the internet. I had no idea how to say that. Creme de noyau, I believe is what it was. If I'm wrong, mention it in the comments below because I don't like to be wrong about these things. But I'm also not French. See, now I'm, I'm like, is it French? I hope it's French because I don't want to be wrong about that either. Okay. What does that smell? Cherry. Yeah. It's like a cherry thing. Okay. Two ounces. Okay. Cherry is not exactly my favorite flavor. Let's watch the color change. Oh. Lovely. Okay. And as per most Trader Vic cocktails, we're not using the Hamilton Beach Mixer. We're going to be shaking this. Let's move her out of the way. All right, we've got ice in the tin. We'll add in that milky concoction, give the glass a smack, and shake. All right, it looks like a frothy pink milk. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the pink cloud. It looks like my bar runs downhill just a little bit, so I can't get it quite even. First impressions of Trader Vic's pink cloud. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's good. Holy smokes. That tastes like drinking a cupcake. Oh my, it's like vanilla cherry ice cream that's been melted. Whew, man, what did this cost? I think this menu is from the 70s or 80s, but 550. Okay, let's let's see if we can figure out how to compare it. The Mai Tai was 750 at that point. So cheaper than a Mai Tai. My god, that's good. Wow. And can you imagine this thing coming to your table with this this beautiful figure holding up the glass? It's just gorgeous. I'm telling you. The tiki thing, and I know this doesn't this particular thing doesn't seem all that tiki, but it's all about escapism. And that's what I love so much about the whole genre. My God, that's good. 
I am definitely making another one of those things. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining us once again on Spike Spreezeway Cocktail Hour. Next week, we will have another special guest, one of my good friends who also manages the Punk Rock Legends X. So join us next week for a Tiki Classic with one of my buddies. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked it, please be sure to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next cocktail video. Aloha. A little while ago, I acquired one of the most beautiful glasses in all of Tiki land? Tiki land? For example, in his Bartender's Guide 1947 to 1942. I thought this was going to be a quick video because this is a three cocktail and was used to serve the coffee de lot. Diablo. The Headhunter Cup was used to serve the coffee de lot. <laughs> Jesus was used to serve the Cafe de la Diablo. God, that's hard to say. A hot passage. Hot passage. Northwest passage. Wow, this is quite possibly the cheapest piece of can opening junk. What the hell? My God, that's good. Oh my God. Woo! Oh my, I can't even believe how good that was. On uh, differedsguide.com, they have the nutrition stuff for this cocktail. This cocktail is 232 calories. 232? How is it so many co- it's tiny. All right, if I don't make another one, then that evaporated milk's just gonna go to waste. If I do make another one, that'll be 464 calories in two drinks. It's kind of too good not to have another one. No, I can't, I can't do it. Oh, there's enough for another one. It's probably gonna be watered down, but I didn't make another one, it just appeared. Oh no, what, hap what happens if I drink this one and then I wanna make another one? That'll be... 464 plus 600 and be 700 and 704 calories, 706 calories. That's like eating a whole meal if I have three. All right, let's see what this one tastes like because this was watered down. God, that's still so good. I can't even tell you how good that is. It's shocking. And it's even better drinking out of this glass with the, the chick holding up the thing. I wonder if they were still using these glasses at the Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills. Because do I miss that one, man? I saw Don Adams walking out of there once. You know, you know that guy from uh, Get Smart? He used to talk into his shoe because there was like a, his shoe was like a phone. All right, I can't make another one of those. That's. That's the kind of thing that you have one of those and it's and you're really pushing the limits. I'm gonna that's the kind of thing you throw up later.